Hello and welcome to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. I am Mark. I majored in history, Hoffmeyer. And I am Jay, NFL trivia cluet. <laughs> uh, uh, the only kind of trivia that keeps you alive. Uh, on this show, Mark and I, we've covered the entire Deep Blue Sea trilogy, DVD chapter at a time. We're now looking at Deep Blue Sea adjacent films. That's films directed by Rennie Harlan, uh, lots of aquatic action, all featuring sharks, which is what we're doing today with our newest release of... of Fresh out of the cinemas, 2022 release of Sharkbait, uh, initially called Jet Ski, now called Sharkbait. We'll get into that. What is what is Sharkbait? Well, it's directed by James Nunn, uh, stars Holly Earl, Jack Truman, Catherine Hannay, Malachi Puller Latchman, and Thomas Flynn as five late teens, early 20s, on their final spring break, who get drunk, stay up all night, and decide the best thing they could possibly do is steal a couple of jet skis. Smash glass Lenora. bottles, jerkily. I mean, everything they do is is they do jerkily. <laughs> uh, I hated these characters uh, <laughs> to a to a person. Uh, they go out at, at night with jet skis. They have a crash, and then I don't know five of them stranded out in the middle of the ocean with just one jet ski that doesn't even work, and hilarity ensues. Uh, so, it, Mark, you love jet skis. This is not a secret. You love shark movies. This feels like the perfect film we should be covering on today's show. As it's a new release, I feel like we shouldn't go full spoilers on it because it's literally just come out in the UK. Uh, hasn't hasn't even come out in the UK. I got like an advanced screening of it. Uh, but did you, did you like the film? Did you like the Jesky action? Listen, I think uh, I want to ask you something real quick before we get into the movie. You and I are we're the, we're the last two remaining people from a jet ski jaunt, right? We got we crashed. Three of our friends have been eaten. It's horrifying. You're laying on the jet ski bleeding. I'm trying to get it started, and I'm trying to keep you awake. What topic should I be talking to you about? Like, who died first in Deep Blue Sea? Who died second in 47 meters uh, uh, uncaged? <laughs> who, you know, like, uh, what what movie did Rennie Harlan direct that stars Lauren Hawley? I, I just uh, do that I, kind of stuff. Would that keep you awake? Yeah, it's it's uh, The Adventures of Ford Fanny. Uh, yeah. But I, I feel like that would be a good one. But that's hey, give me good. the answer to the other two. <laughs> I can't remember. For, I can't remember the character names at all in, in Uncaged. Uh, the second one to die was uh, not the not the like terrible one who tried to save herself by climbing the rope. It was the other one, kind of the more bookish one. Um, but I can't, I can't remember her name. She died in that maelstrom thing. And the other question was. Uh, who died first in Deep Blue Sea, was it? Yeah. Because that's, yep. that's Brenda. Or something, I technically the Tiger Shark. Uh, if you want to go down that, that route. <laughs> yeah, Brenda um, gets it like two seconds before the helicopter. Yeah, it's, it, it's, <laughs> that's like an en masse. If we were splitting up into deaths, then the four of them would all be one kind of chapter. <laughs> uh, but I feel like uh, out, outside of the obvious Deep Blue Sea, a uh, good topic for me would be... Uh, when I was in school, actually, we had to do, had to do a presentation. We had to just... Research something that you liked and do a presentation on it. And I chose Discworld, the Terry Pratchett novels, which Terry Pratchett, my favorite. I always said he was my favorite uh, living author until he passed away. Now he's my second favorite uh, deceased author after after Douglas Adams. So I've read all of the, all of the oh, adult. You have a type. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> um, British com- comedic fantasy <laughs> anti-establishment <laughs> um, is very much my type. Um, so yeah, uh, Discworld novels would be a good one, uh, but then I, then I feel like I haven't read haven't read them for a long time. What about you? What would your, what would your topic be? Just give me five degrees of Kevin Bacon. Just say Mark five. John Leguizamo. Wow. Okay. Mark, Mark John Leguizamo, Julia Roberts, and oh, I, I just got to connect the movies while laying there. Yeah, yeah. I I, I can see that being yeah. You, your mind's wearing. I'm trying to do that myself now. Yeah, see, uh, <laughs> it's getting you going. You're not thinking about the gaping. Uh, teeth marks in your side that are just spewing blood you're thinking about man which movie should i go with collateral damage with arnold should i go well, I with mean... oh wait romeo and juliet with leo leo and catch me if you can and then hanks with julia in charlie wilson's war or larry crown yeah oh oh <laughs> oh you know what's nuts i i'm not lying right now i had the physical sensation of vomit I felt, I felt like <laughs> just something rising. Film. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, listen, I, I joke about a lot of things, but I'm 100% earnest. That sent shocks. Like I felt spewage coming from inside my, and I felt that yes, a couple of days ago while watching Jackass 4.5. 
There's a really horrible gag in there. I think this was worse. <laughs> oh, that, Charlie that, Wilson's War. Yes. Okay, Charlie, okay. Charlie. I apologize for mentioning the other film. That's got the Hoffman. It's got the M. Blunt. I think it has Amy Adams. It does indeed. Yeah, she's one of uh, one of Charlie Wilson's assistants or staff. Yeah, that's a beast mode cast. It is. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame the film's less compelling than the cast should make it. I think. Um, yeah, I, I just remember Philip Seymour Hoffman being great. John John Slattery's in there as well. Jeez Louise. Yeah. He's got because so he's the, like uh, Hoffman's boss, and so there's a couple of scenes where uh, PSH is just yelling at him. <laughs> so, and he keeps breaking his window. He's at his best when he's yelling. I think my favorite PSH is in Punch Drunk Love. Hell shut yes. Up, yes. Shut up. Yes. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. That that's I a think... scene I just go back to and watch sometimes it's on YouTube. Just him on the phone with sound like the way that he plays with the he like gets annoyed with the telephone cord. It just <laughs> I love it. He's he's such a reactive actor. I love everything he does. It's beautiful. And watching Luis Guzman hit that thing constantly, the plunger handle without breaking, just in the background whacking a thing. I could have that as my screensaver on my TV, just watching him hit, go donk, donk, donk. You know, some people have those animated fish tanks or like a fish tank yeah. on a loop that's 60 minutes. I could just have Guzman <laughs> hitting, the, Guzman hitting a plunger <laughs> in the background. But I guess, hey, getting back to Shark Night or Shark Bait. Shark Bait, yes. Uh, I was thinking about this and I would give this movie a C plus. Okay. And okay, I think the, char the characters are, are wildly weak. And even yes. the director admitted that. He's like, I just found the other four because they just have to be eaten. Like, he said that. The uh, James Nunn said that. I do. I think Holly Earl's fine. I think yeah, she I think she's really, good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she committed a lot to the role. She said she trained nonstop for it. I mean, she she's cool. I think she's the one person that you are rooting for in this entire film. Yes, I like don't like the cheating angle with Tom and Millie. That's like... You know, Jay, you have five people on t a crashed jet ski being hunted by a great white. You do not need cheating best friends. No. Like, you don't need cheating. Like, I understand adding problems on top of problems adds more conflict, but there's so much more conflict. Like, there's no reason to have that. It's, it's no not relevant to the rest of the story. Like, if you think about Deep Lucy, there is conflict in that, oh, Susan was doing the testing with the shark and didn't tell anyone. That's relevant to the plot. This uh, uh, soap opera melodrama in, or just stranded on a jet ski in the ocean is completely unnecessary other than to add... I mean, it adds friction between the characters, but it doesn't stop any of them helping each other for the rest of the film. They're all st <laughs> their, their actions are still the same whether this happened or not. It's just it's nonsense. It's utterly un unnecessary. And I do think the movie does uh, get a C-plus for me is because I think James Nunn... He also directed One Shot with Scott Adkins. It's a one shot action film. Okay. Which I'm I'm serious. It's it's good. And then you watch and he also was the second unit director on Forty Seven Meters Down and Forty Seven Meters Down on Cage. And I, I was reading uh just kind of about his process in the, in this movie, and I think he you know, he he referenced Jaws too. He didn't have much of a budget. I really like how he opened this movie big. He didn't think he could get it, and he somehow talked a producer into the big opening where everyone's having the time of their lives during spring break. It does add nice production value to it. There's he also referenced the uh, the reef. I think he he talked about the inner, the process of bringing people in there, and I think he he's a he's a good filmmaker. And I also like the cinematography by um, I have his name right here. It is Molden, Ben Molden. I think he did a good job finding like a hundred plus angles of the jet ski. He, he loved the shot from, of just underneath the water shooting up at the jet ski or somebody swimming. They there's cut back so to that much of that. Times. And then I really like the overhead shots. I don't think there's any as iconic as, you know, the shallows, but that's, that's like saying there's no T-Rex attacks as iconic in Jurassic Park. Like that's really hard. But I think the production wise, I mean, they shot in Malta. I watched a movie earlier this year called Great White, or was it last year, where they shot a lot of it in yeah, studio. That was, that was last year. And I, yeah. I think I gave that movie an F because the characters were – so these characters in this movie never aggravated me. They just felt unnecessary or not – not they weren't – it's a movie where kids get eaten, but they still felt underdeveloped. Yeah, that, there's, there's no – none of them have any real distinguishing it's character to them. There's no, like One of them can't swim. That's that's about, that's her character. Yeah, one gets his leg broken, the other one swims to a boat. It's just, it's yeah. yeah. But I, no um, one can fix a jet ski. But I 
I think there this there's a couple wonky CGI moments, but I do like the shot where the CGI grabs the guy the shot where the guy the shark grabs the broken leg guy and drags him underwater when she's still attached. Like the overhead shot is cool. That's um, yeah. I do like that. I, I I guess we can't give it away, but it's called jet, at the end. There's a jet ski chase. A great white shark chases a jet ski, and I I don't want to go any further. Yeah. But I love shark movies and I love jet ski scenes. And you, I, I can't give this movie anything lower than a C because of that. <laughs> I just, it brings these two levels together. Interesting. After watching Great White, I probably give this movie more credit than it's due because Great White, it was shot on a soundstage. There was no waves, flat characterization. It just pained my soul. I felt my soul melting into the ground. This one? That is a, a film I forgot. bad. So, yeah, it is. Yeah, I watched it last year and, and have, like, purged it from my mind. <laughs> Just so. leave! Leave! Um, I, I still like it more than Larry Crown. But, yeah, this one, though, there's a, <laughs> there's a sheen to it. There's some good drone shots to it. The jet ski crash is good. I think that, overall, the people working on it were quite talented. And, I mean, it's a jet ski. It's a movie where kids are stuck on it. You know what's interesting? Watching the trailer, this movie was better than I th- thought it was from the – like gauging by the trailer this could have been a sci-fi cheeky bad movie but i think the location the actors the cinematography mostly good cgi i mean you know we don't meet the shark until the 20 something minute mark so and i mean and by 10 minutes we're on jet skis already so it does move quick but that's yeah by 13 minutes they've crashed so it's quite economical but yeah, it's a it's a C plus. But now know that since there's a jet ski chase with a great white, it automatically gets a C. Right. So so that's yeah. where I start. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. See, so for for me, this is you know over the course of this podcast, we've kind of discovered several different types of shark movie, and this is kind of my least favorite type of shark movie, where it's like quite a sincere, serious. It's 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 very much like the roof. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I, I didn't enjoy the reef that much because I found it it wasn't very entertaining. I, I, I'm here for the deep blue sea, uh, inventive shark kills and uh, ca- characters like who you really get on with and want to s- like strive and see them survive and make it to the end. And you're disappointed when they don't. And here it's just one fewer name to remember when they when they're killed. So I'm, I'm okay. I can stop writing. The name of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, there, there's no Nancy, uh, right, from The Shallows with Blake Lively, because right, she was yeah. really likable in that movie, even with Steven Seagal. Like she carried that film. Yeah. But even like there's there's no Scoggins, <laughs> who's like a fun character who you know he's gonna die, but you're gonna have fun with him mm-hmm. along the way. Uh, there's, there's certainly no preacher. There's, there's just no there's no one that you're really rooting against. You're you're rooting for Nat, but everyone else is just kind of there. You don't think anyone else is gonna make it. I just I just needed more character to this, and I, I needed more more fun because it's a film about you're, you're stuck on a jet ski with with uh, a shark in the water. That's quite limiting as to what you can do, especially when the jet ski isn't working for the majority of the film. <laughs> so you're just gonna it's, it's a raft for for most of it. It's just an awkwardly shaped raft. They could have ramped the shark in a scene. They could have done figure eights to avoid the shark. You know, they could have yeah, that would have been cool. Drive around a buoy, hit some sweet waves. It's. I I think for about an hour, they're just kind of sat on the jet ski trying to get it to work, or just kind of bobbing there waiting for something else to happen. And I, I feel like I just kept yelling at them. Just those of you who can get in the water, hold the jet ski, kick yeah. your legs. You'll probably you'll move somewhere. <laughs> something you might catch the tide or something. It's better than just sitting there doing nothing. No, uh, I thought the same exact thing. It's uh. <sighs> But I guess you have the guy's leg gets broken. You have someone who really... Which there is a... That when they get him out of the water and put him on the back of the jet ski and then it kind of breaks a bit more, there's a horrific noise that that makes, which is always... I always have to give compliments to horrible bone-breaking noises. Like 127 hours is, is the pinnacle of that. But this this is up yeah, there as well. Wonderful leg snaps. I, I guess... So you have one person who can't swim. You have a leg snapper. And then you have three people to swim. So you could get two people in the water. But then... I mean, you can't really fit five people on that thing. It would be really hard to switch out. But well, I, I feel like you, you, like you say, you have the two who can't do anything, who like one can't swim, one can't kick. Have them up on the jet. They say you can fit three people on the jet skis. So have those two 
and a third person resting on there and just kind of switch out the two that are in the water. Like everyone, like everyone does a half hour or something. It'll be better. You might, you might come across. I mean, there is another boat in the film. You might get to that. Yeah, that's oh. true. I... <laughs> this isn't critiquing the film. This is like what the film could have been, which is kind of bad yeah. film criticism, I think. But... <laughs> I do think the one thing I do love is on IMDb, if you look at it right now, there's the picture of yeah. the three uh, three people on the jet ski. So you have Nat, you have Millie and Greg on the jet ski. You have Nat yes. looking like life is the greatest thing ever. You have Millie just sort of enjoying the open air, closing her eyes, having fun. And then you have Nat actually seeing what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Because this is, this is immediately pre it's the three. It's the three different emotions of being on a jet ski. And I love that photo. Yeah. And also I'm looking at the, the poster and it continues the long trend of – just swimmers Giant being shock. absolutely screwed. <laughs> I think the worst of all of them is in the heart of the sea, where the eyeball is bigger than an entire person. Like you see that poster, yeah. but this one, there's no. It's like this is. I, I, this, this is a poster for for yeah. the Meg, basically. This is a a huge shark that you could swim into, and like do a 180 and now again, quite easily. But it, which is not the case for the film. And who, how is this person that? Uh, <laughs> Well, who is this swimmer? Uh, well, I, I kind of scanned through some of the reviews, and there was a negative review that was like, nowhere in the film is there a woman diving in a red string bikini. Because <laughs> that's what the Are they going to pull a Yesterday and Sue for false advertising? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. And I do <laughs> think it's funny, though, when it says shark bait and original title jet ski. It's haunting me. I just see it right there in front of me. I see... <laughs> the perfect film title existed, and they did I see it. it. But also, not to be reductive, I mean, this is still an 80 with credits. Without With credits, it's probably, what, 80 minutes of... 80, yeah, you take out four minutes for credits. So you're watching an hour and 23 minutes. Yeah, You're right, though. It, it is quite humorless. But it still ends cool. I feel... I yes, think there's it, an ideal way to watch this movie. And I'm not trying to... I feel like I'm... Be, I hate being so negative because I think being negative is the easiest thing to do. But you could start this movie at maybe the 10 minute mark and skip all the, well, you know what though? It does capture kids partying down in a, you know, South American country or Mexico. One of those yeah. on spring break, they're horribly behaved. So, I mean, <laughs> well, that, that, that doesn't help in the, that they, they completely get themselves in the situation. It's everything that happens is entirely yes, level. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you know, that's interesting too, because I guess if you look at if you look at the shallows, Blake Lively's just going to where her mom surfed. And she stays out a little too long. But, but it's not her not, fault. Yeah, she she's yeah. just out for a swim and then there happens to be a shark. These these guys they they get drunk, they they stay up all night, they steal a couple of jet skis, they play chicken with jet skis in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, it's all on them. They have no life jackets. No way of. No one knows where they are. They leave all their stuff on the dock, where of course it's going to get washed away. Uh, they, don't, they don't even leave a note saying we stopped. We, we borrowed your jet skis. Sorry, they just steal them and go. And at that point, I was like, oh, good, you, you crashed. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, but I guess that you're right, though. That adds an, an interesting wrinkle because when you think about 47 meters down and how they're stranded, that's not their fault, and it adds a level yeah. of urgency because they have the oxygen and the bends. And they have awesome flare scenes. Uh, uncaged, you yeah. never expect for prehistoric great whites that are blind. But uh, un uncaged is is kind of their fault to an extent. They didn't mean to get trapped, but again, they're out without yeah, telling anybody. Yeah, that's true. Where they go and they, they shouldn't be there. Um, no. So I mean, they 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 hit some bad luck <laughs> in the the thing caves in because of the sharks. Uh, so it's slightly less their fault than it is in shark bait, but I, I still put the uncaged uh, crew down that end. No, I get it, uh, and I guess what you have bait—they're just in a grocery store and a tsunami hits, so that that's not on them. Right, that's that's. Uh, yeah. But like shark, shark and I, not really their fault. They're just out partying, it, uh, having a good time on the lake, and then it happens to be they didn't know that the lake's full of sharks. <laughs> there's, there's there's rednecks out to kill. Sell it on the black market. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jaws 2, just kids being, you know, kids out. Requiem, there's a floating bungalow, so... You know what's interesting? Well, Jaws, Jaws 2, it's just kids out, but in an area where there have been sharks. Yeah, they before. shouldn't have been out. <laughs> it's Like, famously. Yeah, but I, but they didn't drive jet skis into each other. I guess if we're, if we're doing no. the chart of 
was it their, their fault? Uh, what, the shark bait is the far yeah, end. Yeah, because they life. steal jet skis and then they play chicken. Yeah, the the only kind of argument you can give is they're all drunk. Yeah. But I don't I don't like giving that argument because they, they I mean if you know that you get drunk, stop drinking. Like I I I drink alcohol. I don't drink a lot because I don't want to get drunk. These are college kids. These are college kids who are on a bender. Yes. So this is this is the the thing I can't compare with because I would not have been invited on this. <laughs> I never I never went on any kind of vacation with college with the university friends. <laughs> like I was I went to university, I studied, and then I finished university and all my friends had moved away. This is par <laughs> for the course. <laughs> I would say the jet skis is a lot, but it's, it, it, it makes sense. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not condoning it. And I'm not saying it's right. Cause they break into somewhere to steal yeah. the keys. It's not even like they find jet skis with keys and they break yeah. in. I mean, no, they steal jet skis and then they play chicken. Bad idea. But also you got that dreadling going. Yeah. So you shouldn't be too, I feel like your blood's kicking. You're feeling a little bit more conscious. They've been up for a day. Yeah. Just part. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. But it's still jet skis and sharks, and that's all. Yes. I mean, you know what's interesting, too, is I, I said that it's a well-shot film. I, I, you know what I do love the most is they did shoot in the ocean. You don't feel yeah. much of a studio or a tank. You can tell a tank. Like, Deep Blue Sea has a tank. You feel that tank <laughs> yes. uh, in the beginning shot. I keep seeing tank. But Oh, yeah. I mean, there, there's no indoor shots in this film. Everything's outside. Everything's out in the open air, open sea. So yeah, we gotta gotta credit that, and and like you said, it looks fantastic. This looks nothing like any kind of terrible sci-fi film. Compare this to like Ice Sharks or <laughs> Santa Jaws. This is no, nowhere near the production quality. Yeah, there's, there's actual production design, and not design. I mean, it's the jet ski, but there's actual cinematography in play here. Yeah. And it's all in focus. Uh, the, I guess the uh, one <laughs> problem <laughs> that that it's better than shot than I guess Jules Larry 3. Crown is in focus too. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> but Jules 3D no. isn't. <laughs> I, listen, I know I don't want to sound. I, 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 you're right. I think we are kind of hating on it a little bit. We're, we're, we're both trying yeah, not. We're to. We're trying not to. Yeah. I just, I still enjoy. Listen, at the end of when it turned off, I was like, I just, I don't want to give away the ending, but I was like that was cool. <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, there are some great. Some great deaths in it as well. There's, there's at least two, like you mentioned, uh, when uh, you know, it's no no real surprise that Greg, who's got the broken leg, dies first. So when he gets dragged underwater, Nat's hair is stuck in his watch. That's kind of a cool sequence, and it looks good too. And she breathes for a little bit, looks up. I like that. Yeah, and uh, there's another one later on where we, when we have talked about the shallows, the shark in that is just mean, <laughs> the vindictive shark, just kind of toying yeah. with. <laughs> with Blake Lively, and you get something similar to that here towards the end when the shark is kind of toying with her, dragging things around, which I, I enjoyed those sequences. Oh, it's mean. <laughs> that This shark is not... I, you know, the, We meet the guy in the beginning who had his legs bit off, and I feel like this is a shark. The harbinger. Yeah, the, oh, wow, yeah. This is. <laughs> she's supposed to go get drinks, and then she sits down. But uh, I do think it's interesting that this shark could be maybe a local legend or a just really jerky thing that just torments people and they can't catch it. Like it's just an evil yeah, shark. It's, the, it's Moby Dick. kind of. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. And maybe they just have, that'd be funny if the town just rents like leaves jet skis out to be stolen. <laughs> it was bait. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's called shark bait. It's, it's <laughs> the two tons of jet ski and shark bait. Let's put them two together. Those jet yeah. skis were really easy to steal. Yeah, they were just sitting there. No one was watching. Gassed up, easy to take. Yep. They're pointing the right direction. They weren't that far offshore. There were no boats out that day. And if you look where they were, there was a bunch of boats leaving that area. So maybe this is like a Wicker Man or a yeah. Willy's Wonderland type situation where you put somebody in there to be sacrificed for the greater good the greater good the yeah. cabin in the woods maybe this is a section of the cabin in the woods and now the world's doomed I mean, we have we have the harbinger yeah which you have in cabin in the woods yeah so we're, we're that's what we're, we're missing is bradley whitford and and richard jenkins watching it all and controlling the, the road control shark that's what we're... Oh, is there a scene where they read some like so she met that guy who told her about the shark and that's what kicked off they could have been drugged led that way 
Yeah, it could be something in the drinks. And well, when when they're stealing the jet skis, there was a, a newspaper article on on the wall that was like more shark sighting. Yeah. Uh, so the clues were there. Some they, they had to have, they had to prove themselves worthy of being sacrificed. Yeah, I mean there were plenty of clues. They didn't pay attention, and then they go out, and then they. This is a cabin in the woods scenario. Yeah. Well, there we go. And then okay, so you have to like blow either a conch shell or play a board game. What did they do to summon the shark? They fit. Uh... They play chicken on the jet skis. <laughs> yeah, like the, maybe maybe it's just spilled blood in the water. Maybe it's like like with normal sharks. Yeah, because there is no shark until Greg's like gets hurt. If they went too far, a kraken could have got them. If they went, Cthulhu's out. <laughs> <laughs> Underwater happens. Like yeah. Kristen Stewart's like run. <laughs> like is that Kristen Stewart on a jet ski? Is that Jessica Henwick? What's happening here? <laughs> Wait, the guy from the newsroom? What are you doing here? John Gallagher Jr., there we go. I loved you in uh, that uh, Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Where's John Goodman? That's another movie. But that has a monster in it. It does, yeah. They go, f- Other than John Goodman. They go further, they meet the Leviathan creature. There's squid out there. There's piranha. Oh, no, they're freshwater. Yeah. But who cares? In 3D. Oh, I love that movie. I love all those movies. <laughs> Piranha 3D is a treasure. Yeah, that's a fun one. But yeah. yeah, okay, so that makes I think that works. I'm just, I I think that works too. I think the blood is what summoned the shark. If they dropped some gold into the ocean, then pirate zombies would have come after them. Oh yeah, or um, then you get the shark zombies could be a, a different alternative from from Pirates Five. Oh, shark uh, zombies, pirate shark zombies. <laughs> If you if you're if you're scuba di- if you go scuba diving then barnacle mon- like barnacle bill will come after you. Let's see. If they stole a sailboat, they'd be attacked by. What would attack a sailboat? Hmm. That's a good one. Could just I mean they could just be some kind of boat based serial killer. Oh. When I get down to basics. Like isn't Billy Zane in Dead Calm? <laughs> like isn't he? Yep. Yep. Uh, or, or like the kids from Donkey Punch. Oh. Uh, who just. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind of film. What's what's worse, Billy Zane or Donkey Punch Kids? Uh, uh, Donkey Punch Kids. <laughs> You've just made like an NC-17 film. <laughs> Whoa. If they st- steal a speedboat, then let's see. They would have to deal with like an evil John Travolta from Face Off. I, I, I hope we never get to the stage where we cover Donkey Punch on this podcast. Never. I don't want to do no. that. <laughs> it's like covering a Larry Clark's movie or like uh, a Harmony Corrin well, no, I like Beach Bum. Oh, I, I would talk about Spring Breakers because that's where I'm from, St. Pete. St. Pete. St. Pete. But yeah, all right. So, okay. Let's see. Speedboat. What's it, what, what attacks a speedboat? Uh, Willem Dafoe. No, it's a cruise liner. If you, if you steal a cruise liner, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Yeah. With leeches. With leeches, of course. A speedboat. What's a speedboat yeah. film? So, I don't want to see John Travolta from Face Off attacking them. What what attacks speedboats in movies? <laughs> Bond villains. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, Raul Julia from S- Street Fighter has a bunch of mines that he unloads. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> one, one of the uh, yeah one of the Brosnan Bonds had a speedboat chase in it. Oh, so it could just be like villainous speedboats. Yeah, you get on a speedboat. Yeah, you just get chased down by other ones. And if you get onto like a, a uh, what's the what's the canal boat? Oh, Pop, uh, not. Are you talking about an air? Um, I've been on those before in, in the Everglades. Everglades airboat. Oh, okay, an airboat. Yeah, an airship. airboat. What would that? Yeah, yeah. Then just giant crocodiles, alligators. Whoa! If you steal a tugboat, you get hit by one of those uh, uh, anaconda. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. If you uh, have a yacht, piranhas, sea piranhas. Yep. If you got a gondola. Then it's sharks in Venice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's some Italian mob, mobster has bought in some sharks to protect his his, his under, oh, underground boots. Ooh, whitewater rafting, Kevin Bacon and John C. Riley. Yeah, or um, or Deliverance. Yep, canoes. You get you get hit by uh banjos, yeah, banjos, <laughs> evil banjo fish. I'm sure there's a banjo shark. Are there banjo sharks? It sounds like a, a kind of a shark. Banjo. Yeah, there's a banjo shark. Of course. There is a banjo shark or guitar fish. Yeah. 
you get attacked by guitar fish. Rhino Batiformers. Yeah. What happened to what happened to Jay? Well he was he was canoeing in a a banjo shark or a guitar. Got taken fish. out by ukulele. <laughs> ukulele fish. Uh, <laughs> if you're on a tube Oh it was, it was the accordion squid. Ugh. Let's see, what would get you in a tube? I mean tremors. But we've already gone to piranha a lot. I mean there's a lot of well yeah, there's a lot of varieties of kills in piranha. Yeah. <laughs> the I would say a giant The piranha is a versatile kill. Big lobster. Big lobster. <laughs> If you steal yeah. a fishing trowel, a, a fishing boat, you get hit by a wave. Yeah, if you steal a giant cruise line, you get hit by an ice, iceberg. Or gi- <laughs> 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 or if you a reasonably small boat, Jason Voorhees <laughs> attacks you. Yeah, you hit an iceberg. Did you hear about Jay? He stole a cruise liner, a, a, a luxury cruise liner, and he drove it. How big was it? He drove it into an iceberg <laughs> off the coast of Mexico. Wait, in the in the Gulf of Mexico, he hit an iceberg with a cruise liner? Yeah. Oh. No more questions. Yeah. But, man, I would... Your funeral would be a, like a blast. Because people just... <laughs> Thanks. Well, like, think about it. Like, how did Jay go down? Gulf of Mexico cruise liner well, iceberg. He, he bobbed in the water for a while and the front half snapped <laughs> off and then... <laughs> And then he, there was a door, but he didn't think he could fit on it, so he just drowned. Just drowned. Yeah. I think he bounced off the propeller and drowned. <laughs> um, I love this world. banana boat, uh, but you would have to be a psychic shark. Yes, of course. Yeah. Oh man. So we we just Submar- submarine. <sighs> That's just other submarines generally. The giant squid. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. In the make. Yeah. Well, no, the make. The make. Ten thousand leagues <laughs> under the sea. Yes. Oh, I think we did it. I think we did it. Yeah, this is a cabin. This is the cabin on the sea. <laughs> well, you know, I think there are you can rent kind of bungalows in the water. So yeah, that would be a bungalow in the sea. Yeah, you get you get those like uh, resorts where there's a, a little hut like completely above the water with glass floors. You can see the fish. Oh my gosh! Uh, which would obviously that would smash. They just have this big open. The, the wet wet lab basically waiting to get in to your holiday home. Sounds horrifying. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna live on the second floor. <laughs> so uh, when they realise it's a, there's a shark in the water in, in Shark Bay and they're trying to find it, Millie says like, I don't know, what does a shark even look like? Yeah, <laughs> it's just infuriating because it's the most recognisable animal in the world. Uh, yeah, that was a good line. And also she was yelling at Nat for using her phone to catch people's attention. Like, that won't work. Yeah. But then, you know, Nat gives it to her, which makes me happy. Yeah. I mean, why not try? I do like the line, like, do you know how to fix this? He's like, I major in history. Like, that's funny. Like, that's... Yeah, they're, they're all useless. Yeah, and I do like that. <laughs> Did you see the the writer? This uh, Nick Sultris, he wrote A Prayer Before Dawn, which... Have you seen A Prayer Before Dawn? I have not heard of A Prayer Before Dawn. It is uh, an excellent film. I mean, it is violent and like wildly bloody it's based on a memoir memoir but yeah i mean i think joel cole gives an excellent performance in it and also has um vithaya pan's ring arm i oh, i butchered that but he's also an only god forgives and i love that movie but yeah he he wrote that and he also worked on eastenders hollyoaks east east eastenders yeah. yeah well this is, makes sense as to where the the, the soap opera melodrama comes from because he's written on a bunch of uk soaps yeah emmerdale farm yeah. brookside so- brookside yeah mersey beat holy city he's written on on all of them apart from coronation street i think he's he's almost got the full set wow so then he's used to soaps i mean so he adds yeah. a soapy element to it yeah oh there's no one speaking cockney though was that bad it's just a shame <laughs> that would improve every film I'm not sure what the economy rhyme is saying for a jet ski or a shark is. Uh, <laughs> tree bark shark. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Uh, jet ski. Jet ski. Let's, I want to hear it. Give me it. Let's go. So, <laughs> house key jet ski. Could be. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. No. All right. So, I mean, so th- I like that discovery then. So, no wonder they add the soapy element. Can we explore that a little bit? I was having a conversation before and, uh, you know, there are movies, there's a lot of horror movies that are kind of the same principle where you have movies like The Strangers where a couple is going through, it, 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 you know, issues. They want a divorce, but then they're attacked by masked strangers. 
in vacancy. You have a couple who are about ready to get estranged. Estranged? Who are about ready to get separated. Separate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, and but then. What are you doing this weekend? Oh, we're, me and the wife getting estranged. Yeah. But, <laughs> but then they get attacked. And I think there's always this element of let's add some drama to the relationship to have more. Like, I guess sometimes people don't want a perfectly happy group being destroyed. But yeah. I mean, like the descent, there is some descent amongst them because of the cheating of Juno, but they aren't totally. There is issues, but it's not it doesn't dominate the film and it does play into the narrative because Juno is trying to make up for things and then it leads to the end. But can't you just have a happy group being killed by people? Uh, I mean, in the cavern in the woods, that's a, a, a happy group. There's no the only contention kind of there is. Uh, uh, Kristen Connolly's character kind of fancies the one of the other guys. Yeah, there's not, the not Chris Hemsworth, not uh, uh, oh, Dollhouse, Frank Rance. Uh, she fancies the other guy who I know is famous for other things, but I can't think Jesse of Jesse Williams. Name. Yes. Also, Frank uh, Rance wrote and directed a movie called Mass, which is mm. unbelievable. It. I have it recorded, but not. It, it is. Okay, I know people are very busy and we have next to no free time, but it's one of those movies that's best to get immersed in. I don't know if you have an opportunity to do that. Uh, very few of us I, do, but it's good. It's really good. So, yeah. Okay, so I, I won't watch it whilst editing a podcast. Yeah, there, yeah don't. Cause good to know. It, it's, I've watched <laughs> it a few times now, and it really – I think it's beautifully shot. Um, I know the Atlanta Film Critic, Critic Circle gave it Best Ensemble. It won a bunch of Best, bunch of best Ensemble awards which make which makes me really happy but i don't know uh, one more thing about this movie i do think it uh, can't talk about the ending can we no we can't we can't do it that'd be unfair what do you think yeah i think we should well i mean you can kind of see where it's going I th okay can we dedicate uh, the last br 10 brief, minutes brief of spoiler section what, yeah hey yeah. do you want to go over the deep and um the deep how deep and um Yes. And then what we can do is we'll wrap uh, up everything and then we'll do a quick spoiler section. Is that cool? Perfect. perfect. All right. Okay. Yeah. So before we get into that, just some quick parallels with, between this and Deep We See. Not very many, <laughs> uh, it turns out. I mean, it's a shark movie, uh, but it's kids partying, they're cut off from the land, uh, a phone or someone falls into the water and it drifts down, kind of like the teddy bear at the start of, of Deep We See. Uh, they, at one point they get split into two groups, with one guy going out alone. They are surprised by a dead body at one point. And one of the deaths is a bit like Janice when they're being like held uh, from above, kind of thing. That's so not not very similar to Deep Sea, but that's just a, a short list. And then how deep and blue is it? Is it? Uh, so Mark, as you know, as I'm sure you know, Deep Blue Sea, uh, 47 and a half feet deep, 31 percent blue. Do you reckon shark bait deeper or bluer than Deep Sea? Oh, it's no, it's not deeper. It's not. It's a really good question. It's not deeper and it's not bluer. I would say it's shallows level. It is, it is uh, definitely not deeper. It is basically on the surface level throughout. There's a few shots underneath with a few bits up on the land, but for the most part, it's on the surface level. So it's basically I've got as as half a foot up in the air at the end of things. But blueness, it is bluer than deep blue sea. Ooh. Currently, our bluest film is 47 meters down, which is on average 81 percent blue. This is 72.6 percent. This is a very bl exceptionally blue. Oh film. wow. Because it's it's nothing but wide open seas and blue skies, There's very few clouds in the whole film. It's underwater shots that are whole, are completely blue. This is now our third bluest film. Wow! So after uh, after forty seven meters down and the reef, this is actually very similar in numbers to the reef in terms of depth and blueness. Oh, uh, so that's cool. So like it kind of the reef shallows and this are sort of surface level movies. Would you say? Absolutely, yep. Because uh, the shallows, uh, blueness wise, is similar as well. That's that's like sixty nine percent. Wow! So they're all in that sixty nine seventy three kind of range. That's cool. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, <laughs> we need this chart. So all these movies. <laughs> I keep meaning to do something with it. I mean, we are past our hundredth episode. And I think I said I would do it for a hundredth. So maybe by now it is uh, available somewhere. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. We'll so spo we'll spoilers? Do. Yeah, spoilers. There's a jet ski chase at the end. You know what I like? The shark doesn't die. He gets stabbed in the eye. That was another parallel. Yeah. 
where they, like, they get they find some driftwood and they stab it in the eye with it. With it. And, and she does like, stab it, right? She does yeah. give it a stab. But at the end of the yeah, day... she breaks off that, that, engine, that jet ski cover. Is this the first movie where the shark... Oh, no, 47 meters down... They all live, but this is one of the the shark lives. The like it doesn't get shallowed, it doesn't get deep blue seed, it doesn't get killed like that hammerhead. So it's kind yeah. of refreshing that it's still out there murdering people. I mean, there's a bunch of sharks still alive in Shark. Right? Oh yeah, that's true. The lake is still full, and in, in Shark in Venice, Venice is still full of sharks. Yeah, that's true. But still, I guess when we're talking about like a primary, like one on one, Jaws dies. Yeah. That that shark from well Jaws two Jaws two dies Jaws three Jaws dies. dies Jaws three dies Jaws four Jaws dies, dies. <laughs> so the, the sharks die in bait uh, the shark dies in the shallows uh, so I guess on a one on one basis well orca well no uh, yeah orca the orca survives yeah in orca yeah all right well I lost it there but shark dies orca dies but uh, it's refreshing it's still out there killing people I do like. Just she fixes it on her own. She finds her inner strength. The really angry, jerky boyfriend gets got. Tom. He sacrifices himself yeah. like Shark Knight. He's like, I really was a good guy. I'm like, no, you're not. He's a, he's... <laughs> Tell your family I was a good guy. I would not do such. I would do such a thing. He has a. <laughs> you're a terrible person. Bad temper. You slept with my best friend and at least two other people. And he gets so angry. I think that might be. He's a relatively inexperienced actor, so he, maybe that was his reaction, just getting horribly angry. To the Maybe, thing, as yeah. opposed to defensive, I guess, which is, you're still terrible. But she, I love when she, okay, so she gets away from the shark. The shark's chasing it. He sacrifices himself. But then she gets into the shallows with a ton of rocks. And then she flips off the jet ski, flies off of it. And then she sees a thing, swims, finds her, because she's from Kansas. And then she finds her inner strength, and the shark gets stuck. Like, it doesn't jump over. She, it's, I mean, I probably wonder if we'll get in trouble for the jet ski stealing. She goes to jail at the end in Malta. But, yeah, I think it's <laughs> – she'll have to pay for the jet skis. hope they're insured. But, yeah, I think yeah. it's still a fun ending. It's a jet ski being chased by a great white who's very fast. So it's – I don't know. I, that's fun for me. I like it. It ends well. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you kind of – in a shark film with jet skis, you kind of have to have a shark jet ski chase. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm glad they, they managed to fit that in there. And it looks good. Uh, yeah, I mean the whole film was great. The director said yeah. that that Holly Earl, she was the best jet ski driver of all of them by far. He said she tore it up. She wouldn't have crashed. I should let her drive for early on. Oh, and real quick, the director he interviewed all of them, and he he was like, well, "How do you swim?" So he interviewed all. They all end up swimming really well, but they had to like pretend not to be able to swim because he's like, "I just don't want yeah. non swimmers in the water. Should I get you swim lessons, whatever?" But uh, he told them all, like, this is going to be miserable. Like, we're going to be on the ocean. It's not going to be fun. So when we're out there, I just need you to be team players. And he said that the days were really long. They were really hot. They they weren't ideal days. But he said that all of them were just down. Like, they all got it. You know, when you accept a movie, like, and yeah. I, listen, you can't praise an actor for this, but you hear so many actors complaining about roles. So I kind of like that he prepped them for this. Because you can't get really totally exp- – you're not going to get Leo in here grunting in puddles. You can't afford that, or grunting in the water on a jet ski, which would be amazing. Yeah. But I, d- he, it was kind of neat hearing him talk about the cast and how they just. He said there's a good like synthesis synthesis between them and how they. You know, he said especially Holly Oral, they all they're all just like yeah it was hot, it was long, but we signed up for it. It was cool. We were in a beautiful place. So I like that attitude of all the actors. And I'm, it sounds weird to applaud them for that, but I've been on enough sets where people complain. So it's they seem like a pretty cool cast of actors, I guess, in this movie. So that made me happy. Yeah, I, I had no problem with any of the acting. They all did, they all did a decent job. Yeah. yeah. They found because you know what's interesting? These actors are uh, maybe I should have said this earlier, but these actors are a way a step above of a lot of the sci-fi movies. It's very much so. Yes. So again, I, Ice Sharks a million miles away from from this film yeah. in terms of acting production quality any of that maybe should have started off saying that because but i i i think the performances are fine but also too though like how how are you supposed to pack in a lot of characterization between five people in an 84 minute movie so it's i guess it's just it was a very interesting choice to introduce them as jerky spring breakers who rent jet skis and then 
And, you know, it's pretty bold to have it all in the daytime, too. They could have taken, like, they could have rented jet skis at the end of the day and like, hey, just get it back in a half hour because it's dark. And then they stay out too long, something happens, and then it's yeah. all a nighttime shoot to make it cheaper. But they, this is a full-on production and during the day. But yeah, there's, there's a, a, like, one scene at night. Mm-hmm. A, a little bit at night towards the end when they see, like, the, the light. They try and get that and turn out to be a dead, a dead person. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, bright sunshine. And that shark yeah. destroys that sailboat, does it not? It does. <laughs> the shark, the shark is is efficient. It gets the job. I done. like Tyler. But it keeps it keeps leaving people alive. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sorry, it keeps leaving them intact. It like takes a few nibbles and then is done. But no, I ate the whole thing. Cabin in the woods, bro. Yeah. Because it realizes if it eats all of them, it's going to be full. We established this in Deep Blue Sea. So you yeah. you you know like when you're at a buffet you don't want to pile your plate full on your first plate it's grazing yeah yeah you want to you want to graze so maybe the shark knows the buffet there we go it's, it's sampling all spring of... break buffet <laughs> <sighs> that's that should have been the title of the film spring bake oh. <laughs> yeah well hey we found some positivity here at the end of the episode we did we did yeah that's good uh, yeah. Uh, I, I feel like it, it didn't, given, given how much this this podcasting team loves shark movies and Jessica movies, I don't think it quite lived up to our expectations. But uh, I'd say it's still, if you like shark movies, it's probably still worth a watch. Uh, I think that I think yeah. you're right though. The Achilles' heel is there's no humor to it. It kind like, yeah. even the Shallows had some humor with Steven Seagal and how comically evil that that shark was. I mean <laughs> that shark was an absolute turd i would say like, and, it, <laughs> yeah. and it became funny i remember watching the shallows the first time and just going this shark is insane and i really was able to enjoy it i think this one kind of wants to be the reef but then it also it wants to be the reef but with jet skis i think yeah and yeah. i don't know what else you could have done but it's such an absurd premise and then to ground it but I don't, I don't know. Say, what to do. I mean, you say it's an absurd premise. I think it's 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 a believable premise. Uh, I, th- I feel like the events of the film are, are relatively realistic, other than some people survive a little longer than they perhaps should, given the extent of their injuries. No, uh, yeah, you're but, right. It's not high concept. But I, I, yeah, I feel like what happens in the, in the film could happen. Like you could become stranded on a jet ski in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and so that they are quite. It is a, quite a grounded, uh, sincere, realistic film. But it's sold as being like a, a a wild, entertaining, piranha 3D esque spring break horror movie romp, mm-hmm. and it doesn't quite deliver on that. Yeah, how do you make a piranha esque movie out of this? You need they need some more character to the the characters. They, they Jerry O'Connell. Have some jokes. Yep. Uh, the well, you make Tom Jerry O'Connell. Uh, Greg is Paul Shear. Um. Kelly Brook as Millie. Yep. And then Bing Rames as <laughs> Bing Rames as the the harbinger, yeah, uh, uh, the, the, the 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 beggar without the legs, because he loses his legs. <laughs> there we go. Adam Scott. So. Oh my gosh, yeah, Adam Scott. Yeah. See, uh, that's how you make it better. Put the cast of Piranha 3D on a jet ski. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And what well, those films also it always helps to have something to cut away to. Because yeah. yeah, for, for a while, like Tyler goes for a swim to try and find another boat, but we spend so little time with him. He just like he goes there, yells at it, dies. He could have had a buoy adventure. He could have had several. You know, he could have gotten on the boat and found redemption. Yeah, and then they like try and they try and find the way back to the jet skis. They try and hunt the shark down. They have some whole other adventure that still fails because the boat gets ripped apart. Yeah, the boat. And then, oh, the boat comes to them to save them. The shark takes out the boat. And yeah, then, like Adam Scott's the guy on the boat. I know, like you said, it's lazy criticism, but this is a beautiful movie, and I'm very happy. <laughs> this is we we did it. Prana 3D jet ski. Yeah. Prana 3D D D jet ski. Jet jet ski D. Yeah. <laughs> jet ski. <laughs> Prana jet ski D. <laughs> yeah. Sold. Sorted. Finished. Oh man, I love it. Wait, jet ski, okay. ski D, jet. Wait, prana jet, jet, jet ski, ski do. D, <laughs> part do, jet ski part do, because like C do. Wait, C part do, 
see do 3D. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Piranha, Piranha 3D, wait, Piranha c 3D? Yeah, there we go, Piranha c 3D, <laughs> uh, coming to a, a streaming to you, near you soon. That's going to give people, this is like, Piranha c 3D? <laughs> yeah, so, I didn't see Piranha C1 3D. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. Oh, all right, that was perfect. Okay. I uh, normally would go to the deepest blues now. We've kind of done that, so I'm just gonna we're gonna roll straight into plugs. Uh, what have you got to plug, Mark? Just let's see. Uh, Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. Oh wait, that's this. Movies, films, and flicks, the podcast. <laughs> uh, I was just number one in Nigeria, which is awesome. Awesome. That's yeah. so cool. And uh, you know, we Jay, I don't know what you're doing in uh, the UK, man, but we're we're shooting up the charts there with Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. So I mean, I'm trying. You're out here working, uh, handing out flyers. Going yeah, to the yeah, cons. <laughs> Selling t-shirts. We need, to some, we need to make some t-shirts. But yeah, uh, Movie Sons of Flicks, check that out. And then go to, yeah, we should. Uh, and then check out my videos on film theory, and then fandom. I got the Tom Cruise thing coming up, and then Rotten Tomatoes. Mark off my Rotten Tomatoes. That's it. Awesome. Uh, follow the podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pod. Email us, deepbluecpod at gmail.com if you have any suggestions on other films we can cover or other ways we could sequelize Sharkbait. And uh, you can hear me over on the Lambcast once a month hosting Lampity, the movie trivia version of Jeopardy, always a fun time. Uh, recent guests on that one included a friend of the show, uh, Elwood Jones, who was on for season one uh, for the, the birthday party scene of this show. And read some things that I write sometimes over at lifeversusfilm.com, follow me on Twitter at lifevsfilm, and then come back next week for the time loop film triangle oh triangle's good but as for today as for shark bait and jet ski and uh shark bait sea 3d uh i have been jake flores and i'm mark kansas hoffmeyer and i'll deep blue see you next week